Okay, yeah, we're slowly getting All ready right. to go live here, so let's just start talking about things. Um, yes, things are good to talk about. So really, you're gonna you're gonna say the ten years? No, I just think it's one of the best movies and one of the best horror movies I've seen in years. Like, okay. I, I walked out of that theater with a perma smile on my face. And that seems like a weird. I statement know, to but make. that's because it's a hybrid. <laughs> it's there's so many genres mixed in here. Yeah, and it's Jordan Peele, and he just has a hilarious sensibility and an interesting sensibility. And he talked about why it was so easy for him to transfer to horror, which, which we'll talk about. And as about. you said, the only dialogue in the entire movie is just get out. All they say is That's get out. That's all they say is get out. Spoilers. It's Sorry really about weird. that. All right. Looks like we are heading out live right now. So hello, uh, everybody tuning in. This is Between the Streams. This is our weekly podcast where we talk about entertainment and movies and everything that's happening in that realm. We've got a ton of stuff to get to today. We're broadcasting live on Facebook and YouTube, and we want you all to join us. We've got a question that's up there right now um, asking about what's your favorite horror movie of the last few years. And there's a reason we're going to be talking about that. First off, I'm I'm Greg Nibbler. I'm Ryan Juanita. And I think, why don't we get, just get right into this? Yeah. Get right into Get Out. Yes. That's a pro move right there. That's nice. not something I should have called out. Uh, Segway no, Yeah. So, uh, of the number of things that we're going to be talking about today, including Alien Covenant, we've got some Star Wars stuff, we've got all kinds of different things. But starting off right now, probably the movie I have heard more about just on, a, on an opening weekend in quite a long time than anything yeah. else, is Get Out. It is the horror movie. We've seen, you've seen the trailer. Uh, it's by Jordan Peele yep. um, from Key and Peele. Written and directed by. It's his Written. directorial debut. His directorial debut. Yes. And this is um, getting amazing reviews right now. It's crazy. I mean, I don't think I've, in the whole time we've been doing this show at least, I've never seen a horror movie score 100%. Um, you almost never see any movie score 100 percent, and when you do, it usually falls by the end of the day. And that's the thing; like 100 percent is just such a rare, rare circumstance. It's like crazy. Said, 117 reviews in last I checked, all fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. That's zero amazing. rotten. Um, and it's also sitting at an 8.3 average, which is quite high. Quite an 8.3 average out yeah, of 10. Out of 10. So, and horror movies rarely get that kind of horror rating for movies, anything. A good horror movie is like 75 percent. Okay, yeah. and so that's that's huge. But and there are so many special things about this movie. Um, it's just it's hard to explain like all the different ways without giving it away. So I won't. Right. Uh, I mean, nothing I can say here hasn't uh, already been said. It's it's genre mixing at its best. It's a, it's a great thriller. It's got a seamless comedy blended into it. Um, it's very original. It's well shot. It's well acted. It's well written. It's well executed. It's just um, good all around. It's just great. Uh, when the you know when the comedy does make its way into it, it seems very organic. Um, and it's just not what you're expecting to. I mean, you can see the trailer and think, I've got a good line on this video, on yeah. this movie, and and you will be surprised. And that's the, that's the fun – that's why we go to the movies, right? I right. Mean, that's the fun part. Is to have a surprise <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, and, and, to, and just be, to be like totally – have your mind just whirled around in, in a fun way. Well, and you're saying it's one of the best horror movies that you've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's just – you know, it's so original. So we were talking about It Follows. It's definitely the best one I've seen since It Follows. And uh, It Follows is great. It's great. If you haven't seen It Follows, and I think it's on Netflix right now. We also were comparing it heavily to um, The Cabin in the Woods, which, if you haven't seen that, that's another genre bending horror movie. That's, that's one of those ones, yeah, it's very unlike, famous. It's unlike cult, anything else. Cult classic. It's it's amazing. Uh, Jake in the chat says it won't be hard to improve on Keanu, so I guess they, they do have that. <laughs> and I got to say, I was a huge Key and Peel fan, and I was slightly disappointed by Keanu. Yeah. This took everything. I, I was I, There was a lot of hype leading into this because I yeah. read the reviews, I knew it was sitting at 100%. It was still way better than I thought it was going to be. So what are some of your other, just really quick, other favorite horror movies out of the last few years? Well, uh, you know, It Follows, of course. It Follows. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't mind the new, um, the remake of, uh, let's see. Well, I like, for me, I still think The Conjurings are good. I like The Conjuring you movies. You like The Conjuring You stuff. know, they're your basic, uh, there's a demon haunting somebody. I, I like them. I, I enjoy them. Yeah, Um now I can't think of it all of a sudden. Okay, but, but that's uh, fine. Yeah, the remake of the Sam Raimi movie. Uh, okay, Evil uh, Dead. Evil Dead, jeez. Evil Dead, it just all right. come to me. Evil Dead. But yeah, the Evil Dead remake I really enjoyed. I mean, I enjoy most decent horror films, but, yeah. but rarely are they, you know, striking and stick in your mind. Mm -hmm. And this also has, of course, like racial commentary, right. um, social commentary, but it doesn't 
do it in a depressing way. It does it sort of in a fun way, like Key and Peele always have done in their comedy. Their comedy never, um, you know, it's got like a Seinfeld levity to it, yet it still is able to do racial stuff in, in the middle of that. Um, yeah. They, they just sort of know how to seamlessly do that. You can bend all of that into one. And they're, they're just, I think um, they just have such a great perspective, and especially Jordan Peele in this movie, just his eye is so is so um, keen. He just knows what he's doing, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, well, it's, that's, it's a master at his craft. That's an accomplishment. I mean, since yeah. he's so known for comedy to be able to write something like this and have it have such stellar reviews. I want to go see it this weekend. I'm curious if everybody else out there is planning to go see Get Out. Um, just based on these reviews alone, how much hype it's getting. I now, yeah, I'm really into going to see it. So Get Out this weekend at the theater. Yeah, and I want to talk one more thing, okay. which uh, Peel said in his AMA, which I thought was really cool, is somebody asked him about transitioning to horror. And we had talked about this. Mm-hmm. I want to get credit for this, because I was talking about how, <laughs> how comedy and horror sort of have similar parallels. And one of the things that's similar is that they both have to, um, you know, get a, an emotional response out of you. Yeah. And they usually have to use it through, like, a surprise for horror or just, like, comedy. It's, like, almost magical how a comedy, like, makes you laugh, right? Right. Like, or it's terrible. Or right. Or it could be awful. Well, sure. <laughs> and then and then there's always been camp in horror movies. But mm-hmm. I couldn't say it nearly as eloquent as Peel did. He says... Horror is my favorite genre. I think comedy and horror are very closely closely related. They're both about grounding absurdity. So that just means applying whatever crazy notion you have to reality. They all they are also both about timing. So it was a pretty natural fit for me. Okay. And he just I mean he just knows what he's doing, man. All right. Well, there we go. So <laughs> yeah. uh, get out in the theaters this weekend. We got a lot of stuff to get to that we're going to be talking about, but again, if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook right now, drop your comments on there. Let us know what you think is the uh, like your favorite horror movie out of the last few years or thoughts on Get Out. Um, okay, moving on here. There a couple other things this weekend. I guess we can kind of just kind of blow through those. Obviously, Get Out is the one that people should go see. Yeah, and I also want to say, if you want to see Get Out and you're not a big horror fan, I think you're still going to be fine. You're still There's gonna definitely some violence it. there that you might have to look away from, but I think pretty much any movie fan can get something out of this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it being horror. All right, and so... Uh, yeah, then there's also Collide. Which is unfortunate because Collide stars um, a bunch of people. Exactly, Felicity Jones, I really Nicholas like Holt. Felicity Jones. I really like Nicholas Holt. Um, for those that don't know him, he's like uh, in the X Men mm-hmm. stuff. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's but, in like a bunch of commercials too. Yeah, he's in commercials, but he's sort of like one of those up and coming actors. I think uh-huh. he's really talented. Um, but this one just looks terrible. So uh, Collide and Rock Dog is the other one that's out this weekend with Luke Wilson, Ed, Eddie Izzard. J.K. Simmons and Lewis Black. I mean, Keenan Thompson, Matt Dillon, Sam Elliott. Okay, that's a that's a good it's cast. Got a decent little cast, and this is a this is an interesting one because it's a Chinese American production, um, w- which is what we were talking about last week with the uh-huh. Great Wall. Yeah, it's a Chinese American animation production, um, and it's kind of been sitting around for a while, and they finally put it out uh, with very little fanfare. Uh, they expect it to not make a lot of money, <laughs> and it's going to be mostly making its money back on like DVD. Release. That's going to be depressing for an actor. Like you go through all that work, and you're in this movie. And you put all this time and effort into it, and then the, the theater or the uh, production company is like, well, I don't think we're gonna make any money on this, so I'll just kind of throw it out there, say we did it, and then I mean, yeah. except for actors, it's not really that much work. Uh, well, yeah, I guess they're sometimes still, they, as long as they get paid, they can do that from a studio wherever they live often, and they don't that's even have true. to interact with the other actors. I think it's the hard part is for the animators, yeah, <laughs> they that's spend true. like two or three years on a movie like this, that's right, although maybe not on this one. It, well, it didn't look amazing, <laughs> possible. All right, uh, so we're gonna get on to some other topics here, too. We've got some things coming up, uh, talking about Batman, we've got mo- uh, news about that, some Game of Thrones uh, news, and tying into Marvel that we're going to get to. And we're going to do our Academy Award predictions. Um, we've got a guest that's going to be joining us here in just a minute. Before we do that, something that I had to bring up since it came out this week was we finally got a set a picture of what's happening on set of the new Han Solo movie. It's just a picture, and you've probably seen it. If you're listening to the audio podcast, you've probably seen this before, but it's of, uh, uh, how do you say his name again? Alden Ehrenreich. Blah, 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 that's whatever. right. There. Okay, there, I did it right. Nailed it. Alden Ehrenreich. I was just going to kind of run it over as Han Solo, <laughs> young Han Solo. And it's the whole cast there. I got to say, for me, it honestly makes me less excited about the movie. And I was already not very excited about it. And why is that, Because I, there's just so much room to screw this up. There's no, so no, no. Much room why to, is the picture? The why? picture, I don't know. It just looks... Uh, there's just something about it where I'm looking at it and I'm seeing. I think you're just think, wanting this movie to fail. At I don't this point. want the movie to fail. No, I don't <laughs> want it. I think it's actually finally seeing him in character as Han Solo and sitting in the M- Millennium Falcon. I'm like that's that's couldn't, where Harrison Ford do that in sits. your brain before. That's, that's where Harrison Ford sits. That's his spot. I what that's I like about spot. that picture is that Chris Miller and Phil Lord look like. 
little kids. Yeah. <laughs> they, and I, I think it's awesome that they they are a duo that came together and everyone thought Lego uh, the Lego movie was going to be terrible and they yeah. killed it. And uh, now I think they've ha- got a chance to follow up that success. We'll see if it works. We'll see if it does. Um, I, I don't. I don't understand why everybody's so upset Put about me this. Me as skeptical. I, I understand all. that it's I'm really hard to take Harrison Ford's place, um, and and it might not work. But I, I think people should give it a shot. At all least. right, there's all a right. lot of haters out there. I'll give it a shot. Believe me, I'm going to go see it. I'll probably go see it opening weekend. But I'm just saying. And it's also got not a good cast so, so far. far. They got Woody Harrelson um, and Emilia Clarke is in it. Although yep. she's not done very much good stuff outside right. of Game of Thrones. And yep. Donald Glover. I mean, oh, and I like Donald and Glover. He's, I, I think this could be worth the price of admission just to see Donald Glover like doing his Lando thing. Yeah, that could be. All right, well, let us know your thoughts on uh, the Han Solo picture, if that sways you either way. Uh, I guess maybe I'm just one of the lone skeptics on here. But um, <laughs> No, you're not. Okay, That's I'm what not. I'm talking I'm about. Not. Almost everyone is pissed off about this movie. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> then I'm right. So let's go ahead and bring in our guest right now, because we do want to talk about the Academy Awards are this weekend. I'll be honest, I have not seen a lot of these movies, but we do have a, a special guest here from Digital Trends, our uh, movie aficionado. Yeah. What, what was the title? That you wanted I to said give. he's our copy editor slash movie buff. Movie buff. And That's he's what also it was. seen a lot more of the Oscar movies than I have, so yeah, we so, need to bring him in. So we've got Rob in here with us right now. Hello, Rob. Hi. Hi. Good to be here, guys. All right. Good to have you. It's nice and cozy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it gets quite warm in here. Just, yes. just to warn you. Especially right. when Greg grabs your leg. That's true. Well, that's everything She's happens under do. this table. Now it's getting you know, weird in here. The table <laughs> is strange. That's why uh, we got this little cover. All right, let's talk about the Academy Awards. Now, Rob, you've seen a lot of these movies that have come out. Uh, five of the nine best pictures. Wow. So that's probably better than about anybody else in here. Um, but let's go down the list. Let's talk about just just who you think is going to win. So we're going to do our predictions for our some predictions. of the main categories, right? And then you okay. can let us know what your predictions are if you're watching or listening. And then, of course, call everybody out if they get them wrong. Um, so best actor in a leading role. Yeah, so you're the guest, so we'll let you go first. Who do you think is going to get it? you got Casey Affleck, Andrew Garfield, Ryan Gosling, Viggo Mortensen, and Denzel Washington. Okay, here's my convoluted answer. Um, it's uh, Casey Affleck's to lose, but it looks like he might be doing just that. Losing it, really? Um, There's been some controversy over some harassment claims from years ago, and uh, a lot of the things I've been reading is it's gaining traction with the Academy voters who are really kind of fickle and reactionary a lot of the times. It's true, and I had him down as a lock, and until you said that, I never even thought about that. I mean, I had read some of the rumors, but it's it's interesting that uh, they're going to, you know, they can't take the performance as it is, and I understand that, that these are you know, um, real allegations and they're serious ones, but I don't really know what it has to do with the movie, uh, except they don't want to put him on stage, I guess. Well, when yeah, he wins I mean, best actor. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's but all... so, so if it's not Aff- Affleck, then who you think is going to do it? All right. The, the scuttlebutt is that it's going to open it up for Denzel to win. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's going to be Ryan Gosling in a kind of sweep Okay. By La La Land, and, uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest type suite through the uh, the huge tide of La La Land, which All right. is just getting everybody it's crazy. Just, yeah. All right, so everybody you're going with it. Ryan Gosling. Ryan, right. you're going with. Uh, Casey. I'm going to stay with Casey Affleck, Sticking but I Affleck. think I think I might be wrong. I All think, right, I think Rob has a good point here. Okay, let's get on to the next one. Then we've got Best Actress in a Leading Role. So you have uh, Isabel Huppert. Don't know who she is. Uh, Ruth Nega. I like her. Natalie Portman. Emma Stone, Meryl Streep. These are just me. Yeah, I like that person or I don't. That's how I make yeah. my predictions. Um, and they are, we could also say the movies they're in. Yeah, yeah, they're in some movies too. <laughs> Let's say, but, well, okay, where, where are we at on predictions for these ones? All right, go ahead. Oh, me first? Yeah. Okay. Um, it seems like Emma Stone's almost a lock for that. I think. Another the, La La Land one, huh? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, Emma Stone's going to take it. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. Wow. Yeah. All right. So yeah. La La Land is that good? I'll be honest. I haven't seen La La Land. And again, I haven't seen all these movies, but I just, from what I've heard, it just seems yeah. like Emma Stone is is the lock. I mean, it could okay. always be a surprise, but yeah, I have to say Emma Stone. Okay. It, if it's Doubling not down. her, it might be Isabel Huppert. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got to uh, double down on Emma Stone. That sounds wrong. Double doubling. <laughs> uh, two votes for Emma Stone. Um, <laughs> so we'll quickly do the supporting role ones. Uh, actor in a supporting role: um, Mahershala Ali. Jeff Bridges, Lucas Hedges, Dev Patel, and Michael Shannon. Who do you think is going to get it there? Ali in a knockout. Ali? Yeah. If it's for Moonlight? 
Uh-huh. Can I see what he did there? Yeah. <laughs> Ollie in a knockout. It was, it was good. It was good. I was going to let practicing. it just go there. See who he's got it. I actually have Ali as well. Um, I, and I, I haven't actually seen Moonlight. Uh-huh. Uh, again, this is why Rob's here. Yeah. But uh, one of the reasons I think it's, Ali is going to do it is because he is a phenomenal actor. And he's been coming up lately. And I think that Netflix, um, his role in Netflix made Luke Cage. Oh, dude. Oh, you know, he's so good at um, Luke Cage. And yeah. so I feel like. He's just got juice right now. Yeah. So I, I think he could take it. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. I'm not and I've heard the it. music is quite good. <laughs> it, I've heard. Okay. It, yeah. it kind of combines the old style Hollywood musical with kind of a modern twist. Okay. And, and it's good, but really, I, I didn't think it was great. Okay. All right. But it's still, it's going to win most likely. Oh, yeah. All right. And uh, finally, for best director, we've got uh, yes. Damien Chazelle for La La Land. Shocking. Uh, Barry <laughs> Jenkins for Moonlight. Uh, Dennis Villeneuve uh, for Arrival. Kenneth Lonergan for Manchester by the Sea. And Mel Gibson for Hacksaw Ridge. Of note, really quick, just for those tuning in um, live, right now it looks like we are back up. So we're just kind of going through what our, for the best director on YouTube. Like, YouTube audience is there. So I'm just going to let you guys know that we know you're back. And thanks. I'll, I'll follow along with the comments. Looks like we had some things there. Um, so, best director. Who do we think is going to get best director? I think it's you know it's just part of the tide. Uh, yeah. Damien Chazelle. So it's just a La La Land sweep. I, yeah. I actually am going to go the other way on this. Okay. I think Denny has been. Um, kind I of call him Dennis, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. it old, doesn't matter. Dennis. I think he's got. He's been on his way for this. And I think he's going to take it with a rival. You think so? I really? Do. Yeah. Best director for a bold, rival. We'll see. Bold pick. We'll see. Didn't you just say though that that space movies don't win? They they don't win Best Picture, but I just think that he is the hottest actor in Hollywood right now. And or I think director. Gonna, or sorry, director. And I think they're going to give him it. All right. They gave it to Quran for Gravity a couple of That's years right. ago. And he had been doing a lot of cool stuff leading up to that exactly, as well. Yeah. And I think this is going to be more about some of his other stuff he's done as well. Okay. All right. So there we go. So there's the predictions. Um, we'll make a note of all of those. And then, uh, of course, you know, skewer everyone that was wrong on, yes, uh, on each of these. Yes, as we do. Yes, publicly shame <laughs> for, for all of we'll those. We'll have to bring Rob back on just yeah, to shame him. Just to be like, to Rob, how, to. <laughs> how could you have called that one this way? Like, all right, well, Rob, thank you so much hey for joining guys, us. Thanks. That was great. Thanks, this is great. Appreciate yeah. It. All right. That was Rob, our movie buff who is uh, here at Digital Trends right now. Also, he does copy editing, but, you know, yeah. really, it's the movie. But that's not that's the main. That's yeah. the main thing he That's does. not important. Um, okay. I feel like Johnny Carson, man. We brought in a guest, yeah. and then they left. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Now we just need an animal in here. good vibe, yeah. All right. We'll bring Should in I the, move to this chair now? The squirrel lady will join here in just a second <laughs> to talk all about squirrels. All right. Uh, moving on with some of the other things that we've got uh, to talk about. I wanted to bring up this. Uh, Batman. We've got... Every week, it seems like we have a, a new development in what's going on with the upcoming Batman solo movie. It's yeah. been rewritten. We've had a lot. Ben Affleck stepped down as director. We had last week where it sounded like Matt Reeves, the director of Cloverfield and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and I think Rise of the Planet of the Apes, or uh, um, War of the Planet of the Apes, um, was stepping in probably to be the director. Now we got word this week, this is per Hollywood Reporter, that talks apparently broke down and, uh, and he, br- he backed out. It even said, the report suggests that this might not be the final word on Reeves' involvement with the film, though the two parties could resume negotiations, quote, when heads cool. That means <laughs> there was some kind of a fight in this thing. I guess. I'm, what's weird about this to me is this seemed like one of the safer choices. Um, ben Affleck was leading it, and it kind of came out of nowhere, but you're like, oh, well, he's, you know, he's a good director, and yeah. you know, he's, he's a good writer. Yeah, um, Argo's good. And he's, he's got a lot of, like, juice these days, but I don't know if it was because Live By Night just got totally ripped apart in the reviews. You think that's the reason? No, I don't know why. I, I, it's just odd to me because I think Batman seemed like a pretty safe bet. Like, yeah. the solo Batman film. Right. And, you know, DC has their troubles with these films, so I kind of felt like this would be the easy one that they wouldn't have to be freaking out about. Yeah. Not all these other Zack Snyder films, which just keep trying to be not dark, but still are dark, and, uh-huh. like, the dialogue isn't fantastic, and... I just, I'm surprised. It's I'm weird. surprised that this one is having so much trouble. It's weird that it's, it's going not that hard like that. to make a Batman movie. Ask Christopher Nolan. You yeah, know? <laughs> I like those ones myself. Yeah. everybody likes them. I mean, yeah, it's Batman, straightforward. You yeah, know? it's pretty pretty easy. But yeah, they're having so many problems Ask with it. Tim Burton. However, there is now news coming out about something that could be a spinoff of Batman that I'm almost more excited about than the actual Batman movie, and it is finally bringing to the screen the character of Nightwing. Now. I want to say who Nightwing is and explain what that is. In in Batman versus Superman, 
in the beginning when they're showing Batman going through the Batcave, they show the uh, uniform with the Joker, where the Joker had spray painted something over it, saying like, ha ha ha, the joke's on you, Batman. Okay. That uniform was the uniform of Robin. So what it told us is that right. there had been a Robin. Robin is clearly not with us anymore. Okay. Because, or whatever happened, he's not around anymore because the Joker had gotten him, and Batman kind of looks at the costume and is like, oh yeah, that's sad. Well, in... <laughs> I, I don't think I saw any of that. But yeah, okay. there's actually an image of it. I, yeah. I snagged a picture of it that we'll uh, try to throw up there that shows um, what Batman, uh, what, what he saw. Sure. And there it is. So if, if you're watching live, you can see it. You it, just Google it if you're if you're listening via podcast. Just Google uh, Batman versus Superman Robin. So that uniform that they showed, it's if you look at it, it's got an R on it. Okay. So it is Robin's uniform. Now Robin, that Robin is dead. Okay. Assuming the other Robin, the way the the way the comics work, there's another guy that steps in as Robin, but then he breaks off from Batman and decides he doesn't want to be a sidekick anymore because Robin is so lame. Robin's kind of lame. Yeah. And he wants to become Nightwing, and Nightwing. Is ne- what they're talking about bringing to an actual movie. It's the director of the Lego Batman movie is actually in talks with Warner Brothers to bring that character to a live action movie. And they're talking right now. They've already got somebody on board to write. It's Bill Dubuque from The Accountant. So we could actually get to see Nightwing on on screen. If you okay. play the Batman Arkham Asylum games, it's pretty exciting. So I just want to bring that I up. I mean, let's say. let's also say The Accountant uh, failed miserably. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. So is Batman so far. Yeah. What do you but know? At least, you know, maybe we'll, oops, maybe, we'll get, uh, maybe we'll get to see Nightwing. And so there. That's the news that we have on that. We do have some casting news to bring up as well. We do. And it has to do with Game of Thrones actors. And I would say probably, probably even more hated than Joffrey in Game of Thrones. Yeah, Ramsey? I mean, I thought he was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Ramsey is... I don't know. I hated Joffrey more. You know, Ramsey's, Ramsey's probably more evil yeah. um, because Joffrey has at least the the you know excuse of being a child a little bit. Yeah. But I just thought, I don't know, he has a more punchable face. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, I don't know. Ramsey's, for me, was awful, of course, but also like intriguing in his villainy. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean it is. Whereas a, Joffrey, I was just like, get that kid out of there. Yeah, you just want to punch yeah, him. Yeah, and get I guess he's there. probably the nicest person he's, in the world. Yeah, too. I've heard he's a totally nice guy. Yeah, but no, I still want to punch him though. It's if rough. I saw him, it'd be well, my, don't punch, my instinct. Don't punch the kid. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> it'd just be my instinct, like, oh, you, you bastard. <laughs> I think that's why he retired from well, acting. Probably, he's like, nope, I'm good, I'm done. But you know who didn't retire? Ramsey. Yeah, yes. the, whose whose actual name is uh, Iwin. I wouldn't re on. I don't yeah. even know if I'm saying his name correctly because I just see him and I see Ramsey. But he is now being brought into the Marvel Universe for the upcoming Inhumans TV series. So he's going to be the lead. He's playing Maximus the Mad, uh, which is Black Bolt's younger brother. Black Bolt's kind of the leader of the Inhumans, just for anybody who doesn't know. And, uh, but I guess Maximus the Mad is going to be the lead as far as we can see. Interesting. Yeah, so, so is he going to play a villain then? I don't even know these characters that he's well. He's a good guy. Um, but it's, it, the Inhumans are kind of weird, and it kind of depends on how they're going to spin things. But technically, he's he's a hero, I guess. The Inhumans are this whole weird side group right. of people that it's kind of they're almost. I wouldn't say necessarily, but almost like the X Men. Isn't it an X Men breakoff? Or it's not it's an X Men. They come from a different planet where they were taken, and I'm not completely okay. sure on it. But then they go through this cloud where they get all kinds of superpowers. As it's you do. strange. Yeah. yeah, as you do, you go through a cloud in space and you get superpowers. Everybody knows that. Yep. But anyway, so there we go. He's going to be joining Inhumans, which should be kind of interesting. He's a, he's a good actor. Another uh, Game of Thrones actor getting into a movie, actually the person he tortured during it, Theon Greyjoy, uh, also with his real name, Alfie Allen, is being added to the cast of The Predator. Yeah. Another uh, person the Predator, joining The Predator. What is going on with that movie? It's starting to get interesting. Um, I'm still on board, you know, I, I like Shane Black. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we all know how, or anybody who listens to this show uh, regularly knows I'm not a fan of Olivia Munn. Yeah. No, uh, you do not like Olivia Munn. It's because she's a bad actress, so that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Nothing personal. She's just right. not good at that, and so she probably shouldn't do it. Uh, but Hot take. I, yeah, it's interesting. Like, Alfie Allen, like, he's a, he's a pretty good actor. I, yeah. I just, you know, it's going to be, this cast is starting to get strange to yeah. me. But 
Yeah. I guess we'll have to see. I mean, it's a weird idea to make this Predator movie in the first place. But so maybe here, it's just here we too have many pieces to the pie. Or... But we actually have a director who worked on the original. He yeah. worked on the script when he was just coming up, and he is also the guy who wrote the original Lethal Weapon, and he's yeah. done all kinds of interesting movies. The thing for me is they're adding in all these actors. Shouldn't the focus really be on the Predator, though? You don't need a whole lot of other actors. It's the Predator's the star. Kind of. I mean, the Predator is just some dude in a suit. I mean, in the first one, though, I mean, it was it was... They had a bunch of people and they whittle them down. Let's say dock them off all early. Then it's just Schwarzenegger versus the Predator. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that's exactly why they have all these people. Just so they have people to kill off. All we can hope for okay, is that right. Olivia Munn dies first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, there we go. Bring in the comments. Ryan Stake on <laughs> Olivia Munn. Okay. Let's uh, move on to another movie that has been kind of anticipated and kind of, uh, I think a lot of people are a little hesitant on, on rooting for this one, but it's the new Alien movie, the follow up to Prometheus, which will be the sequel to Prometheus and the prequel to the the original Alien in 1979. Uh, this movie, to me, just keeps getting better and better. I, I think it looks awesome. I actually agree. And yeah. I know that may not be a popular comment, but Alien... Why is it not popular? I didn't know this was hated. No, I think for hardcore Alien fans, they're pretty hesitant to get on board with it. I am super stoked for this. So Alien Covenant coming out on May 19th. They released a trailer back in December, and now they've released... It's about a four and a half, five minute prologue to the series, and we've got a little bit that's playing here on the YouTube channel. What it shows is the the main cast, James Franco, Danny McBride, Michael Fassbender, and then everybody else that's in it, and they're kind of on a ship and getting ready to celebrate and party for some reason. And it's what interesting, because Franco's already sick, and yeah. we like, had, some, yep. we've had some you know early on warnings that he may not be the... May not last too long. Captain for long. Yeah. And the other thing that I like about this movie, it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, when we were talking about horror uh, mixed with comedy. Uh, it turns out Danny McBride is a huge horror fan. And mm. so I think he is bringing everything to this. And he's also like holds Alien up as like one of the like the holy grail of sci-fi horror. Well, so then that's good that I he's feel like it. he's going to bring a lot to this to this role that he's going to play as well. I think Rick on YouTube just commented probably giving a little bit of insight why I think people are hesitant about this. Uh, Rick says disappointed in Prometheus, maybe the next one will be better. I think a lot of people were turned off by Prometheus. I, this... I get that. It was a flawed film. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very entertaining film, but mm -hmm. it was certainly flawed and it didn't look uh, aesthetically, much like the original Alien, either. But you can tell already that they're trying to make this one look more like the more original like aesthetic. Alien, yeah. they, they show them around a table with sort of the white lights and the uh -huh. dark around them, and it's very, um, you know, nostalgic of the original. And the the premise, just to kind of wrap up the Alien Covenant talk, is that they're going to a planet far, far away to colonize it. Like the furthest away any human has ever gone, I guess, to colonize a planet. Okay. Is what they say in the uh, in the trailer or in the prologue. So that's kind of and where things going. don't go well. Shockingly, <laughs> things, something happens. So yeah. Alien Prometheus, or, or excuse me, Alien Covenant, the follow up to Prometheus, out on May nineteenth. All right, now we're going to talk about a couple of new series that are going to be coming out, and I got to say, I haven't been so excited for a series in a long time, and it is yeah. Castle Rock. I'm glad you you found this because. This is awesome. It's so cool. Yeah. Now, we all know if you've watched any Stephen King movie, if you've read any Stephen King book, almost always, not every time, but almost always, there ends up being a reference to Castle Rock, Maine, the mythical town, or well, the fake town in his, in his uh, world, in the Stephen King world. But it, there are so many ties to all these different books and movies. Either it takes place there or they reference something. I believe there actually Castle is Rock. a Castle Rock, too. I is there think, an actual Castle Rock? I think there is, but but you know his is fictional and his not is, based on it. I don't right? Think. Yeah, his Castle Rock. Yes, yes. And now Stephen King has partnered up with J.J. Abrams and Bad Ro Robot Productions to have a ten episode series on Hulu that is going to be called Castle Rock. It takes place in the town, and supposedly they are going to have links to every book and movie reference that's ever had Castle Rock in it. So they're going to have links, or are they? Is each episode I, an anthology about that story i don't know okay i don't know yeah uh, from what i understand is that it's from what i'm guessing is it's going to be the all the same story but it's going to tie them all together in some way okay um how they're going to do that i don't know but the, well, just the idea that it's stephen king and jj abrams i'm a hundred percent on board. Which they work together on that Hulu show as well. And uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, 19... 11, 21, 63. Whenever Kennedy was assassinated, <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Which which I with thought James was James Franco, and it was. It and, was. I thought they did a good job with that. And this is also going to be on Hulu. They um, just announced it well last week, and they think it might even make it to the screen by the end of this year. 
that we could actually see this. Yeah, so that, that would be a fast track. And, yeah. well, unless they just kept this secret yeah, for a that's while. True. And they, they've been filming it the whole time. Which Abrams is pretty decent and who knows? at they, keeping secrets. Yeah, and they didn't give an actual release date. But I, from, from what I've read, they're speculating it'll be the end of this year. Well, what's interesting is um, if you've ever read Needful Things or saw the yeah, mediocre yeah, movie. Yeah, Needful Things. It's a great book. Yeah. Um, the movie's okay. But that sort of that book is sort of a wrap-up of Castle Rock stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different um, Castle Rock references that come together in that book because yeah. it, it sprawls so much. Yep. Um, so I wonder if they're going to take from that. There's a lot of ways they could go with this. This, Yeah, I mean, well, everything that references it, you can have that. I'm sure they'll have you know the Shawshank prison somewhere in the background or they drive right. by it or something like that. Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's, that's coming to Hulu sometime maybe next year. And uh, going along the same line of a you know, kind of, well, maybe not the same line. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it, but something that's coming out on Netflix that's that's continuing with a sci-fi kind of theme. And it is The Discovery, which is a new series, or a new movie, excuse me, that's going to be on Netflix. It stars Charlie McDowell, or created by Charlie McDowell. I'll get this right, I swear. <laughs> uh, it's coming out on March 31st. Created by Charlie McDowell and Justin Later. Charlie McDowell is actually Mary Steenburgen's son. If oh, okay. You know, yeah, if you know who she is. Uh, Ted Danson's wife. Ted Danson's wife. wife. Yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Anyway, he's the... He's, he's the also in Step Brothers. Creator. And, yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's the creator and director. Stars Robert Redford. Not Jace, bad. Jason Siegel. Pretty good. Mary Steenburgen. Yep. Shockingly, he's hired his mom. Uh, Riley Cough. She's uh, good. Rooney Mara. Riley Keough. Keough. Nice try. Yeah, I figured Riley I Cough. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the E, it's cough, ah, whatever. I like it. Rally. And Rooney Mara, who's great too. Yeah, this is a hell of a cast. It's this. a hell of a cast, and basically the plot is, in the near future, there's uh, Robert Redford plays this doctor who has made a scientific breakthrough that essentially explains the afterlife. And there's definitive proof of it and how it works. And from my gathering of it, it's basically they're going on a thing that you get reincarnated. And so people just start committing suicide to reset their lives and to start oh over. My God. So there's just this epidemic of it. And his son is played by Jason Siegel. And he's arrived at the compound with some weird woman. And they're, it sounds like maybe he's, he's against what his father is doing. It's hard to say. The trailer is intriguing enough, though, that this is another one I'll watch as soon as it comes out. So it's The Discovery, again, that's going to be on Netflix on March 31st. So is it, it's debuting on Netflix, and it will be probably like a small theater release as well? or I'm not sure. Usually I, that's how it goes. We'll probably see it in some could of those see it in some theaters. Like Alamo Drafthouse type theaters. We'll okay. See. Yeah, that's probably a good point. I bet it will be. But yeah, so the discovery on Netflix. That sounds great. Yeah, it feels like we're getting like almost a resurgence of the Twilight Zone. Like, yeah, Black Mirror, Electric Dreams. Right. I dig it. For those that don't know, Electric Dreams. Yeah, Electric Dreams is going to be the series based on um, Philip K. Dick's books on yes. uh, on Amazon. That's Which be we happening. are extremely stoked. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, final thing today. That we wanted to get to is our Between the Cracks segment, which is yeah. one that we do where we try to find television shows or movies that maybe aren't getting as much attention or maybe you've heard about but haven't really given them a try. And we can finally swear on the show. And we can. Well, it's not swearing. It's, it's not just swearing. saying somebody's name. Just saying the name. It is Shit's Creek. <laughs> Shit's Creek. And Yay. It's, a it's fun because you can fake swear. Yeah, fake. Uh, so Shit's, Shit's Creek <laughs> is, um, oh, real quick, uh, going back to... What we just talked about with Twilight Zone stuff, Rick made a good point. OA, that's another one that ties all yeah, into that the stuff OA. Too. Yeah, the totally. OA. Um, all right, but Shit's Creek. I actually just started watching this last weekend, and I've already blown through almost the first two seasons. Wow. Mm-hmm. I've heard really good things about this, but it was in the past, and I kind of forgot it existed because there's yeah. always too much stuff in and my face. And it's one of those that, that I, yeah, same yeah. with me. It was just kind of by like, the wayside. It's a Canadian series, right? It's a Canadian series. So it's created by Eugene Levy and his son, who's Daniel Levy, and uh, they both star in it. The, the plot is this. It's a real simple show to digest. Like, it's not very complex. It's Eugene Levy and his family. His wife was Ka- is Catherine O'Hara. So of, perfect. Yeah, of all, you know, all can, the Christopher Guest. The, they're pulling these Canadian actors and these Christopher Guest players. And, yeah. And Chris Elliott, who Chris I've Elliott always is loved. It. Chris <laughs> Elliott plays the mayor of Schitt's Creek. And the, the plot is, and this isn't really giving anything away. They say this in the first five minutes. Eugene Levy and his family... Um, were like real wealthy, like hundreds of millions theirs. Right. And they had a business manager that turned out never paid their taxes. And so it starts with the IRS just taking all their stuff. And the only asset they're allowed to keep is back in the 80s, Eugene Levy had bought this random tiny town as a joke for his son because his name was Shit's Creek. So he thought it was funny. They let him keep That's the deed to that. 
<laughs> and so they had to move to this small town as these super rich people. She's a former soap opera star. And uh, and then they have to live there in this town and somehow try to survive. It sounds like a, you know, sort of an Arrested Development vibe going on there. Very much which, that. you know, that's not a terrible thing at all. No. I mean, and Daniel <laughs> Levy is, is in it. He's great. I would say really? he's kind of the breakout star of it. Cool. He's really, really. And good. I love Eugene Levy. Like, yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, and so he if made you made one too many American Pie movies, but don't right. hold that against him. This is he's a little less Eugene Levy ish in this one. Nice. So it's to me, I think it's it's a great show. If you're just looking for something light, fun to watch, you don't have to think too much. I mean, it's just a hey, let's let's watch something very easy to to engage in, and it's and it's funny too. And where can you get it? On uh, Netflix. All First right. two seasons on Netflix. The third one's airing now. Easy um, enough. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just airing in Canada right now. But yeah, the first two seasons are available on Netflix. So there we go. Nice. All right. Well, I think we've gone through a lot of stuff today. Um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, on and off the air. Yep, on and off air. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to Between the Streams. So we do this show live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we've every, got a new software thing Friday. that's been having some trouble, <laughs> so we apologize for that. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll generally be live every uh, – every Friday on YouTube and Facebook. And uh, we love to have people join in, comment, tell us if there's a show or series that you think we should be catching up on or watching that we haven't seen because there's, there's so much stuff out there. And we just try to give you a little slice of it every week and maybe fill you in on some things that are happening. And so we also have the audio podcast, which you can subscribe on iTunes or TuneIn or Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts, we will be there. Just find Between the Streams and uh, and subscribe and give and us a rating. Do yourself a favor and go see Get Out. You are going to love it. I will I'm do giving it. Giving you a guarantee. A guarantee. Guarantee. That's a Ryan. That's a Ryan guarantee. I don't know. I could try to find a pun in there. That's enough. All right, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next week with another episode.